is saying in the Philippines that my right ends where the right of others begin. Right? Ang aking karapatan ay nagwawakas kung saan ang karapatan ng iba ay nagsisimula. Tagalog yan. Diba? So yung ating karapatan, meron tayo niya. Pero ang ating karapatan ay nagwawakas kung saan ang karapatan ng iba ay nagsisimula. For example, we have the right to celebrate and say something, to sing and create music. However, when it affects the right of other to a peaceful living, peaceful community, then you will be summoned by the authority and say, stop, lower your voice, right? Because the rights of other is being violated. So that's why freedom is not an absolute freedom. So Christians in this autonomous country that we're living in, we are under regulations, authority. For example, uh, in the case of Brother Eric, he is under authority of death. So he must submit. So that is a reality. That's why if BJ get married, that is the same thing that's going to happen. Right? He will be under a certain authority. The authority of your wife. So we cannot live our lives totally free. We have to submit to certain level of authority. Now the good thing is, when we talk about realms and authorities, and there are different levels of that, you know, physical authorities, physical realm, the laws of the land, the authority that God has given to the, to, the, to, the, to the government, and at the same time, we have these heavenly realms, heavenly authorities. And that is when God has given us and, 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 and this uh, authority that God has given us is something that is beyond, above, and more powerful than authority and realms that we can find here physically. So we are now seated together with Jesus Christ. We are now united with Jesus Christ according to Ephesians chapter 2 verses 5 and 7. It says that even though we were dead because of sins. He gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. And for He raised us from the dead among or along with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms. Because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages an example of that incredible wealth of His grace and kindness toward us as shown in all He has done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. It means that you are now seated with Jesus Christ in the heavenly realm. That these, we are now under God's authority. That we have submitted ourselves into God's authority. And remember, that is exactly what, uh, what, what Jesus Christ has been telling Nicodemus in, in John chapter 3. Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless the kingdom, the, kingdom, the kingdom of God. And unless a man is born from the dead, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Entering the kingdom of God, it means that you are allowing, submitting yourselves to the authority of God. And that happened when we place our trust on our Lord Jesus Christ. That we put ourselves in submission to the authority of God. And the good thing is, this submission of us, God, when Jesus Christ raised up from the dead, we have been raised up with Him and we are now seated with Him in the heavenly realms. And it means that the blessings of God are now given to us. We have the access of God's blessing in the heavenly realms. That there are physical realms that are true and realities physically. But at the same time, there are uh, that we have the heavenly realms that give us another reality. For example, so in the physical realm that we are living in, in this world, what are the realities? Realities are <coughs> there are problems in peace and order. Realities are there are sometimes economic crisis, political crisis. Reality is uh, the, 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 the Canadian dollar, you know, uh, is uh, devaluating, and sometimes it also uh, being uh, uh, getting stronger, and sometimes get, getting weaker. So that is reality in, the, in this life. There are crimes and everything. So that, those are 
two uh, that are happening and occurring in our in, in our physical realm. However, when we talk about the spiritual realm, there are realities that we must also accept and abide to. That if economic crisis is real in the physical realm, then in the spiritual realm there is no economic crisis. According to his economy, glorious economy in heaven, there is no crisis. In the physical realm, sometimes we get sick, but in the spiritual realm, it says that by strength we have been healed. In the physical realm, we have these needs. In the uh, spiritual realm, every need has been provided through Jesus Christ. So these are two realities that collide with each other. And we are being, uh, and we are at the center of it. The center because we are still alive and living in this world, physically speaking. And we are actually also subjecting ourselves to these physical realities. And we are also living our lives in the spiritual realities wherein these realities in many cases contradicts with which each other. And we are at the center of this collision between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of man. We are in this collision at the center between the collision, uh, the collision between the spiritual realm and the physical realm. So these realities are colliding with one another and we are at the middle of it. So that's why we have been affected. So the, what we should do now is that begin to change our physical realities allow and allow the spiritual realities to take place in our lives. So that's why when we talk about you know, the power to overcome, the enemies are real physical realities, and even in the spiritual realities, but we have been overcome because of what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. And that's why we can now walk, talk, and live our lives triumphantly because of what the Lord has done in our lives. Even though there is real physical realities in this world, then we can overcome them because of Jesus Christ. The first S is that the, 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 the point thing that the cause has done in our lives is that it gives us a different standpoint. Standpoint, it means worldview. The way we see things. In Spanish, punto de vista. In, in French, point de vue. So, in, in uh, in in Ilocano, in Jaiti Bagir, in Jaiti Bagir, and then there, di tuto yun. So ibang punto ng vista, punto ng vista, punto ng vista. Ibang pananaw, different way of looking at things, and that is what we must develop. That now, because of what happened in our lives with Jesus Christ, we have been crucified with Christ, then. It gives us a different way of looking at things. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14, it says, As for me, may I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the cross, my interest in this world has been crucified, and the world's interest in me has also died. So that's a very powerful statement, you know, uttered with our Lord, uh, by, 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 by Pastor Paul himself. He said that there are two crucifixions that took place. Number one, of course, the most important is the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. He was crucified. And because He was crucified, then you and me are also have been crucified to the interest of this world or from the interest of this world. So it means that we are not living our lives according to the dictates of the world. Romans 12, verse 2, be Transform. Do not be conformed to the system of this world, but be transformed by renewing our minds. In Galatians chapter 6, 14, because of the cross, my interest in this world has been crucified. The world that is being referred to there is cosmos. It is not, you know, the stars and the galaxy that has been uh, talked about, but it refers to an organized world system. 
or arrangement designed to promote a specific emphasis or philosophy. For example, you know, different philosophies in the different time school. Uh, I mean, in the world of sport, in the world of finance, in the world of politics, it always gives us something. It always influencing our line of thinking. It's always influencing the way we do things. And these are different lenses that we use in seeing things. But now, because we have been crucified, then the Apostle Paul said, I have been, my interest in this world have been crucified, and the worst interest in me has also died. It means that we must not use the world views and the way the world look at things and living out our lives. We must have a different, we must use different way of looking at things. It must be different. So, what does it mean? So it means, for example, that what the world dictates must no appeal to us anymore. That we must not live our lives based on the dictates of this world. Maybe in terms of happiness. You know, the world says happiness is having all those, you know, uh, smart TV, you know, or going to places, Blue Mountain, or watching movies, those are happiness. I'm not saying that those are, are bad. I mean, those are good. But we don't rely on doing those things for us to have the joy and real happiness. Because our joy and happiness rest on our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, so the world will dictate, okay, in order for you to live your life and, and, and be happy, you must have a lot of money. Now, money is not a problem, right? I mean, money is a neutral thing. Having money is not a sin. So it is not a sin for, for you to become a millionaire. How I wish every one of us will turn out millionaires after a while. I mean, uh, I pray that God will give you millions or maybe billions, right? And I would like to pray also that you may have millions and billions uh, of money. That is not wrong. That is not a sin. Because Apostle Paul said to Timothy, it is the love of money. That is the root of all evil. So it is the love. It is not having money uh, per se, but it is loving money as your priority that would make your lives miserable and this world miserable. And how greed has turned out this world has become, uh, you, you know, it's very obvious that it's because of greed that wars are uh, erupted, you know, between nations and among nations. It has been greed. You know, that, 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 that let people uh, allow themselves to live their lives in the, in the world of politics, especially in the Philippines. So what I'm saying is, those are not the one that will bring real happiness and joy in our lives. So that's why we must change our own worldview. We have now a very different standpoint in this life. That our success does not depend on the material possessions we have. That our success does not depend on how beautiful our house is. Our success is, does not depend on how beautiful or how big uh, money we have in the bank. Because our success must be defined by the Word of God. By doing His will, you're living a successful life. By following His will, you're living a successful life. So it means that we must use different perspectives. That we must employ different lenses or different lens that is not the same with what the world is trying us to believe. Because if that is going to happen, then we are going to live on this world life. So that's why we must align ourselves with Christ, that we have been crucified with Him. The interest of the world has been crucified also. It has no attraction anymore. It is dead. The world system is dead. We don't react. How many of you uh, have died physically before? Now, you, you want to experience that? Just let me know. I can, I can carry that out for you. But have you seen dead people, dead bodies? Have you seen any dead bodies before? Yeah. Okay. Does a dead body respond if you tickle the body? No. Does a dead body respond if you hit the body? No. Because it's dead. So when the Bible says that we are dead to sin, and alive for righteousness. And when the Apostle Paul said 
that, uh, that, that, that he said that I've been crucified. You know, when because of Jesus Christ, I've been, I died and crucified from this world. That it has no interest in me anymore. My interest in this world has been crucified and the world's interest in me has also died. It means that we are not responding to the season of this world anymore. That we must have a different, uh, you, we must use a different lens, a different standpoint, a different worldview, so to speak. Why? Because of God. Because of Jesus. The last thing, and this we will close. The last S stands for our status in Christ. That God has provided us a new status, a new identity. And according to 2 Corinthians 5 17, again, it says that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things possibly behold, everything has become new. So, with this in mind, the newness, Apostle Paul has a different way of putting it in other scriptures. And he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 31, For I swear, dear brothers and sisters, that I face death daily. This is as certain as my pride in what Christ Jesus our Lord has done in you. So what he was saying? He was saying is that he is facing death daily. Now, what kind of death he was referring to in this particular passage? Now, we all know that the apostle Paul has been persecuted before his conversion. He was the one hunting down Christians, putting them in the prison cells, and allowing and permitting them to be executed. But when he got converted and experienced the power of God, then he began to proclaim the gospel. And then other people began to pursue him, hunted him down, and then make his life miserable, physically harm him, and many times, several times, you know, he was almost killed and mobbed by, by the people who have been offended because of his teaching. Now, literally speaking, he, was, he faced death in many occasions. He was hurt, beaten physically by those people who are opposing the gospel. However, when the Apostle Paul said that for I swear to your brothers and sisters that I face death daily this year as a as my pride in what Christ is, our Lord has done in you, he was actually saying, you know what, I am uh, looking at myself every moment, you know, the connection that I have with what the Lord has done on the cross when he died, that I, I, I consider myself dead and the purpose of his life and his death and beautiful resurrection, I always identify myself to that. And that's why he said, you know, recall, consider that you are dead to sin in the book of Romans. So, Apostle Paul acknowledged that the cross is something that where we must put our trust completely, our dependency on Christ, that He is our sufficiency in this life, that He is the one who will give us, who will provide everything, that in this world we are putting ourselves dead on a daily basis because of what Jesus Christ has done. It means that we are not responding anymore to the worldly enticement, to the worldly things that are being offered by this world to us because we consider ourselves dead to sin. And we're embracing a new status in Christ that we are now God's people and our sufficiency, sufficiency rests on Him and our lives rest on the Lord Jesus Christ. That we do recognize that without putting ourselves bed on a daily basis, there's a tendency for us to live our lives away from Him. That the moment we learn to submit ourselves, then we are going to develop by and through the action of the Holy Spirit, our desire, you know, for new things that is pleasing before the sight of God. Our proclivity, our tendencies is always for the glory of God because we have learned to recall into our hearts and mind that we are dead to sin and we are alive unto righteousness. So what the Lord, Jesus Christ, has provided us when he died on the cross. It is not only the Lord has given us a new status in this life, not only 
we receive a different standpoint. The way we view things in this world, not only God has made us overcomer, but also He made us, He brought us into a new relationship with Him and a new capability that is the, uh, which is the result of the Holy Spirit in us. Not human ability, but God's ability working in us and through us. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for this wonderful time you have given us to talk about the benefits and what the cross has accomplished in the lives of your people. That we are being, we are being reminded of, Lord, that we may uh, be able, Lord, not to let our over-familiarity with the cross the values, the importance, and the benefits of it that would lead, Lord, into complacency on the part of your people with regards to their faith and relationship with you. But Father, as we celebrate and as we commemorate your crucifixion, your death, and resurrection, by the end of this month, O oh God, that each one of us will receive a fresh understanding and revelation of the cross where Jesus Christ was crucified and what it has accomplished in our lives. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.